I think it is. Question number five. And I think Renee is going to have a lot to say about this one. <laughs> there have been visits to heaven or hell. Oh, yes. <laughs> you already said a lot about that. Uh, <laughs> should we have Renee go first then, since she's an expert on this subject? If she's ready and pumped up, I don't see why not. <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you ready, Renee? Visits. There have been no visits to hell because the lake of fire, nobody's there yet. The resurrection and the judgment seat have not occurred. Now, once that's dealt with, the issue is this. When the dead, when the lost die, do they sleep? Or are they conscious? Well, if you believe they're conscious, the Bible talks of a place called Sheol or Hades, which just means the grave or the dwelling of the dead, right? But the final destination translated hell, there's a lot of confusion when the King James Version translates five different words, hell, Tartarus, which is where the fallen angels are bound. No human beings are there. Right. It's a prison for the fallen angels. No people are there. Then it translates Hades and Sheol, Hebrew and Greek, which is the temporary holding place of the lost. Temporary holding place. Some believe they're conscious. Some believe don't. That's not what I'm arguing here. But it is not the lake of fire. Then you have the lake of fire or Gehenna, as Jesus referenced it. Because Gehenna, there was a trash heap outside of Jerusalem where the dead would cremate their bodies. The poor would cremate the dead there. So Lake of Fire slash Gehenna is translated hell. No one is there yet. That happens when the dead are risen at the judgment seat and they are bodily cast into the Lake of Fire, where I believe are executed because God doesn't give immortal bodies to lost people. He gives immortal bodies to save people. But as far as the intermediate state, which would be translated Hades, right? Or Sheol, which is the story of Lazarus and the rich man took place. If you believe it's a place where the lost are conscious, it's a temporary holding place. However, people mix that place up with the lake of fire also mix up stories that they hear in Catholicism and Dante's Inferno and Greek stories that uh, pagans made up about the underworld. And they mix them all up. They also mix up words like where the worm dieth not to say worms are crawling in people and torture. It's nonsense. If you go to the Old Testament, when it says the worm dieth not, it's talking about heaps of corpses. It just means the bodies will never rise. Their corpses will continue to decompose. It's a metaphor for that. It's, it's clear in the Old Testament. So these people, first of all, are telling you they had a divine revelation of a place that's non-existent in the scriptures based on misunderstandings of idioms written in the Old Testament because they didn't know they were references to the Old Testament. So they put their private interpretation on them. So if they went anywhere, let's let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's say the enemy gave them a vision. It would be the intermediary place, Hades, the place of the dead. But not the lake of fire because nobody's there. The judgment hasn't happened yet. So uh, no. Absolutely not. I believe one of two things is happening. One, they want to sell books. They want to draw after disciples after themselves. They want to get famous. They want to uh, uh, have their own churches and travel around. They almost always have a book to sell. Or, and also because they, they can't really back up some of the stuff with scripture. When you ask them to, they've really just taken Versus they don't understand and made them say something else. Um, or the enemy, let's give them the benefit of the doubt that they're not liars, but I believe most of them are. That they have been given a vision by a spirit that we're supposed to test the spirits. 
because every person I've heard took a trip to hell, also had a false gospel message and denied eternal security in Christ. Every one of them. So uh, absolutely not. And if we're talking about them visiting the intermediary place, Jesus said in the story of Lazarus and the rich man, no, we will not send someone back from this place to warn your brothers. They have Moses and the prophet. They can hear him. Even if I did some send somebody back from the dead, they won't believe. So no, he's not doing that. As far as trips to heaven, Paul said when he was taken to the third heaven, he didn't even want to admit it was him. He said, I know a man. He didn't want to lift himself up. And he said it was not permissible for him to speak of what he saw or what he heard. These people like Kat Kerr coming back telling you about Korean barbecue and Star Wars playing in the movie theater and everything else going on in heaven. I thought it was about being with the Lord and worshiping him. So it's all a bunch of nonsense. I know we want to believe this stuff. I know we want to peek behind the curtain and imagine all this kind of stuff. But you know what? I stick with the scriptures and what they say. I has not seen. We can't even imagine what God has stored up for those who love him. So my focus is right here on what the Lord wants me to do, because I know one day I am going to be with my Jesus. I don't need anybody to tell me the details of heaven because I know that's my home and we will be there. We're going to be here with a new heaven and a new earth here on earth with Jesus ruling and reigning. I believe that it's literal. I also don't have to worry about hell because I'm not going there. And as far as the intermediate intermediary place, Hades or the dwelling of the dead, that's a temporary place until the resurrection when the lost are risen up bodily and they're cast into the lake of fire. So nobody's in the lake of fire right now. The, the confusion comes from translating all, this, all these different words as hell when they're actually different places. Hades and Sheol just mean the grave or the place of the dead. And lake of fire and Gehenna are the final place of judgment, the lake of fire. They are not the same places. And so you get all these mixed up stories and not one of them has the right gospel. Every one of them deny the finished work of Jesus and they mock our blessed assurance. I don't listen to a word they say. In addition, if you go to new age people, Hindu people, they all have, they will swear they were taken to these places. They saw Krishna there. There's all kinds of other religions that claim the same supernatural visitations. What do we say about them? They didn't happen, but ours did. I, I'm sorry. It's not biblical. It doesn't stand up to scripture. And I'm sorry. I got to throw it out. Mm -hmm. Throw it out. I agree. All right. So Jordan. Uh... By the way, it's troubling a lot of people and they're putting far too much on it. They are believing these people far too much above God's word. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Jordan, read that to me again, please. There have been visits to heaven or hell. Okay. Um, there have been visits to heaven, but there's not been any visits to hell. As Renee, uh, I just say amen to every, everything she just said. I have a, a playlist. Uh, on my channel called um, what is the state of the the dead maybe it's what is the state of the lost I can't remember but uh, find that playlist and there's uh, uh, a lot of teaching on, on basically on what Renee had been said had, had said about it uh, but uh, I will say that uh, I, I do think there there's been two people that uh, of course apart from the Lord he's and he came down from heaven and he's gone back to heaven. But uh, I believe that John and Paul uh, did go up to heaven. Uh, I think John was was taken up. Uh, 
maybe it was just completely a vision. Maybe he was transported and, and actually went to heaven. I'm not sure, but I think it's possible that he did. Uh, but I believe Paul was the one that he was actually referring to when he said there was a man and that, uh, and he says, uh, whether it was in the body or out of the body, I, I don't know. I think Paul's referring to himself. And I, and I think at the time that happened was the time that uh, it says that he, when he was preaching in a city, they got so angry at him, they took him out of the city and stoned him and left him for dead. And I believe he did die. I think the people don't, when they stoned people back then, they didn't just stone them a little bit. <laughs> they stoned them till they're dead. So uh, uh, he was dead. He, he went up to heaven, and, and uh, but he was told not to talk about it. Just like uh, there are things uh, uh, in uh, uh, Ezekiel and also in Revelation where it says these things are sealed up. So and that's the means that what you saw I've revealed this to you, but but seal it up. Don't share it. It's not time for anybody to know, but no certain things. So I think Paul was told uh, not to talk about his experience, what he saw in heaven. Um, but he, he tells us, uh, you know, about going there and, and and some things, but not not the things that he was supposed to be uh, silent about. Um, but uh, the people who are contemporary, who say that they've been to heaven or been to hell, uh, yeah, they're just... They're either deluded or they're just dishonest. It, it, that's the only conclusion I can make. I believe the scriptures and their accounts uh, do not conform to scriptures. So therefore, either they're, they're right and the scriptures are wrong, or the scriptures are right and they're wrong. Okay, Brother Jordan? Yeah, actually, um, I couldn't help but like leap up and down because there's so much that Renee said that was already like, planning to come out of my mouth. I'm glad she said all the words because I would not have been able to remember all the different parts of hell, but it is important to remember that no one is in the eternal lake of fire now. Um, when it comes to these, she made a great point that a lot of them are just in it for books. The one that comes to mind all the time, his name is Bill Weiss, and he wrote the book 23 Minutes in Hell. And it's just so funny that these people who have this grand revelation, one, why did they get that privilege? If they were wicked enough to go to hell, why were they so privileged to have this revelation to begin with? Second of all, why do they have a different gospel? And it, there's actually a video online with Bill Weiss, like going, it's like a 45 minute video, I think, where he's debunking once saved, always saved. And it's just absolutely crazy how many of these people who have had these beyond, these ethereal experiences that they don't understand very fundamental doctrines like imputed righteousness and eternal security. So we do have to remember that these grand revelations are to sell tickets. They are to book TV appearances. They are, and you also have to look, what TV shows are they appearing on? Like, come on, if we are seeing them on Oprah Winfrey's show, we've also seen Joel Osteen on there. It doesn't necessarily make them credible. It just makes them new age movements, which Oprah is all for. So with that said, we do have to be diligent. As far as the visits to heaven, you know, there are the biblical accounts of people who have gone to heaven. But again, we have a lot of 21st century people who have visited heaven, quote unquote. And I don't believe that for the same reason that I don't believe people descended into hell. Because it's just, I, I can't think of a reason why. We already have all the promises we need in the Bible. Why do these people need to come back and reveal things that had already been revealed to us by the apostles and by Jesus Christ himself. Uh, you mentioned a uh, Bill Weiss. Yeah. He claimed he was a Christian when this happened and he's got, you got to repent of all your sin. Anybody that thinks they've repented of all their sin, I, I can't even help them. But <laughs> I mean, flesh is flesh. Until you leave this body, Paul even said, I have not yet attained perfection. Until we leave this body of death, we will not. We're going to strive to. We're going to walk in the power of his resurrection, but none of us can be 
perfect. They they really believe this. They're just out of their mind. Lazy legalism is what uh, uh, Luke calls it. Uh, but Brother Luke, the last woman that I refuted on this, her entire ministry was to say that once saved, always saved was a doctrine of devils. She claimed to have gone to both heaven and hell. And she starts her video, her, her pitch on it's supernatural with. And so I gave Jesus my three wishes. I wanted a Jeep Cherokee. I wanted a log cabin on Lake Superior and I wanted world peace, but I gave world peace to someone else. Cause I really wanted the Lake Superior cabin and the Jeep. What is he a genie? So three wishes and Jesus, are you just going to, you know, fold your arms and shake your head like I dream a genie and get your wishes. It's just so stupid. I don't know why they did. I know he's laughing at me. I, I don't know why they didn't pick up on this. And they're going, amen, amen. And in her hypocrisy, she has the nerve to say, once saved, always saved is a doctrine of devils. That was the main reason I was taken to hell to tell you. And then she has the nerve to pray to rest in his assurance. I said, what assurance? You just said, we don't have assurance. So it's just a bunch of confusion and religiousness is all it is. False prophets all day long. Like I don't, I am so glad I see it now, but I, I, I am overwhelmed with horror that the vast majority of Christians don't just call these people out for what they are, Luke. Absolute, obvious false prophets. There you go. It's all about Jesus, man. If your experience isn't all about Jesus, I don't want to hear it. You got it, Luke. Yeah. Yeah, I remember you made that video. I, 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 you took her message, her recording, or her video, and, and just went through it. It was really, uh, you know, you need to watch that, Jordan. She just I gave have you. Have to. Oh, she, so she gave you a little sample of it now, but you need to watch the whole thing. I did like what it's she said though. Page. It's it's the video that's on my homepage. Is the first one you see. Like when you hit click home. I'm oh, like, with like Sid Roth. Like it yeah. begins with Sid Roth. I will definitely watch that in full. Um, yeah, but I like what you said about the genie. Because a genie, that is such an evil spirit thing. And it's just, you can start to see hints like that. Like, oh, three wishes. Even though she's not saying Jesus is a genie. That's an evil spirit type thing. Like, who who, who is Jesus to even have to do more than he's already done, people? Who are we to even think that he owes us any more than he's already blessed us with? And really, uh, uh, if people think that uh, salvation is earned through works, you're actually making God your debtor because you're you have at the judgment you can go before God and say, "I deserve heaven. I earned it." You know, through my through my work. So I did this and I did that and that. So you owe me. So it's uh, just it really everything about it is uh, just absolutely sickening to me. And uh, I suspect that Jesus is sickened by it, too. It's just like when we talked in our conversation the other day uh, about the Pharisees, how uh, Jesus had all this love for the adulterers, the uh, the uh, the um, prostitute, the, the tax collectors, but boy, what he said and thought of the Pharisees, the the self righteous religious hypocrites, boy, he, he really let them have it. The names mm -hmm. he called them, so he's really uh, sickened by uh, religious hypocrisy and self righteousness, uh, and I'm sickened by it too. Yeah, and if you guys actually haven't watched that video, that is a great, uh, it's the podcast Luke and I just did on my channel. And it's such a great conversation about, it, you, we kind of spend the podcast answering, is Christianity a religion? But it's so true. Jesus does not care about religion. He hates it. He wants a relationship. And it's just the legalism, the, pro it's like, that's why I say pride is one of the most dangerous sins. It's funny that the legalists will always point to, oh gosh, what are some of the big ones? Drugs, uh, pornography, lust, homosexuality. Like they'll 
those are just so unforgivable, but they are so guilty of pride every single day of their life, and they never repent of it. Dr. James White, perfect mm-hmm. example of somebody who needs to repent from pride. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, well, um, while I'm thinking about it, uh, I, I am so um, impressed with this conversation we're having here tonight on Fun Fellowship Friday. I'm impressed, so I'm going to go here and go, good, thumbs up. Thumbs up, Renee. I did it. I did it. Uh, and uh, Brother Jordan, uh, I think it's possible for you to uh, paste in the, the link to, uh, of the video of, of us uh, uh, in here in the chat room. Let's see if you can do that. Yeah, uh, I'll give it a go. Everybody, if, if, if you have not already subscribed to Brother Jordan's channel, uh, we would love for you to do that. Um, uh, by the way, today... Uh, on the, the Church of the Eternally Secure uh, uh, YouTube channel, on the home page, the top playlist are uh, recommended uh, channels. And of course, um, I'm recommending my channel and Renee's channel. Uh, and I just added Brother Jordan's uh, channel to that list here. So I hope that you'll all go to his channel, subscribe, and uh, start watching what he's doing because he's really doing some quality programs. I, I had a great time. Renee's going to be on his program in, in, in a week or so. So yeah. I'm, really, I'm really looking forward to that one. Me too. Yeah, I'll listen to yours as soon as I've had a breather. I'll make sure I listen to it, Brother Luke. Uh, you know, it really concerns me, though, when I hear this, and not just this, Victoria was saying, yeah, and everybody in Sid Roth's uh, audience is going, yay, and clapping, and I'm thinking, mm-hmm, you can't live however you want, think you going to heaven, mm-hmm, they're all, and I'm thinking, how lost, 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 most of, most people really, that claim to be Christian, really don't know the gospel, they really do not trust Christ, they really do think God is in debt to them, owes them heaven now, Jesus is somehow just the supplement to their righteousness. It's like, okay, I'm really, really good, except I did make some mistakes. So um, Jesus can take care of them, but I pretty much deserve it. I mean, in their own head, I stopped doing this and I stopped doing that. And and therefore that's why I'm going to heaven. It's Jesus plus I am being good now. You know, that's why they'll say, well, if you die while you're, you're backslidden, you go to hell. Cause see, they really believe that. You got to confess and repent and get back in right with God. No, Christ died once for all. You're born into his family and you are his child forever. And if you are not chastised, you're not his child. So you can go on. And if you are not in misery in that rebellion, something's wrong. Something's wrong. So, you know, that's not to say you're automatically going to get over everything, but I got revealed to me things that I didn't even realize. You know, people come to me and say, oh, the Lord had a message for you. No, he didn't. He didn't give you no message for me because I talk to him all day and he tells me about me. He don't never tell me about nobody else. It's always what I need to be doing different. No matter how wrong I think somebody else is, it's all. But what about you? What are you doing? It's never a, a message to tell somebody else to fix themselves. So, you know, you were talking about relationship. They think a relationship with Jesus means they're they're trying to keep the commandments. So again, act save, so you are. That that's not it. And it's hard to get people saved that think they're already saved. They really do. And you yeah. grow if you're not in grace on solid ground, knowing where you're going when you you're you're stagnant. You cannot move forward. You're gonna you're spiritually you're just gonna stay there so i don't know how many of these people like she was saying in his audience that are clapping and for the wrong reasons uh i it's sad to me because i am horrified to think of all these people not saved they're not saved how are they unless they believed it sometime in their past and if they did and grace did save them why do they hate grace so much if they're saved by grace why do they hate grace and accuse grace of a license to sin when we know the more you grow in grace the less you sin it doesn't even make sense 
So it's very, very horrifying. And it's those people having these visions and supernatural revelations. Yeah. And I think that's very interesting because I've dealt with this in my very short time on YouTube. You know, there are people who genuinely think that they just stop sinning. Like, and it's all in their willpower and it's all for their glory. And it's so dangerous because that tells me how deceived you are that you don't even like, it's one thing to think your works play a role in it and that you need to repent daily. It is a completely different deception to think that you don't even sin at all anymore. That is terrifying. You are so heavily deceived at that point. And I just, we definitely should be praying for them for their heart to be softened. But you know, I think for us as free grace believers, it's a little bit harder to have that attitude sometimes because they come at people like us so hard and they attack us on such deep levels. But, you know, that I think that's just one of the many reasons why Jesus told us to turn the other cheek, because if they are ever going to come to Christ, it is by our love and lack of retaliation to them. So while we know they are deceived, it's important that we just continue to preach the truth, the true gospel, and just hope that their heart will be softened enough that they will repent towards Jesus.